as this outside cornerback here has to follow him across. And he basically sets a pick on half the DBs as this guy just runs around the pile and is wide open. But I also could have threw to this corner route as well. But this is the same idea. You can see how once again, these routes are going to set picks on one another. And both receivers are pretty much wide open the same way they were against cover zero. So you can see because I have all these other zone beaters going, that this particular player just gets forgotten in coverage. and just runs down the center of the field. It gets opened by about 10 to 20 to even 30 yards of space by the time the ball's in the air. For the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no-band guarantee delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Mad Cheese, as always. Got a brand new offense for you guys today. I recently put out a brand new ebook in the Chicago Bears, and I couldn't help but notice a lot of people really seem to be enjoying this offensive ebook. Now, before getting into the video, as always, if you guys want more help, more money plays, more tips, you can get all that from my ebooks, and you can download them instantly simply by clicking the links in the description or the top end comment. And to me, it's one of the more unique playbooks this year. It's one of the more, uh, one of the better, more reworked playbooks. And I want to try to show you guys another couple of offenses. So I'm going to show you guys an offensive formation that I plan on using some game plays going forward out of the single back tight wide off flex. To me running the ball right now is one of the easier things to do in Madden so I'm going to focus on this formation because it's definitely a run heavy formation but if you guys know my scheme you know my channels I'm also going to show you guys a one play touchdown out of this scheme versus every single defense as well as some dink and dunk plays so you can have an entire offense. Now when it comes to the audible plays I probably have like five six seven plays in this scheme but the four that I want to keep my audible plays at all times I'm always going to want to have access to are typically going to be the halfback zone week which is going to be my best inside run you also have the uh, o1 trap which i'm going to go over in a minute uh, if you guys want to have that play instead but i find that this particular play is just a little bit better more consistent also got the jet sweep which is going to be a very good um you know mix a play that i'm going to mix in from time to time the under z curl which is going to be my one play touchdown against a couple different defenses cover three cover two specifically and then the shallow cross which is going to be my one play touchdown against just about everything else now my fifth play that i would call before you know my active play would be the wide zone because it's essentially just a stretch play but i'm going to show you guys all the run plays first because there's a a lot of run plays before i do that though if i know that i'm going to be running uh given the new uh fatigue issues that's created by having a lot of tight ends on the field i would say it's best to swap out if you know you're going to run to swap out this receiver here uh with a backup tight end or a tight end in some manner so i'm going to go ahead for the run plays i'm going to put uh whoever it is it doesn't really matter if i have a larger tight end or a better run blocking tight end i can do that but it doesn't really matter i think mercedes lewis is probably the best blocking tight end so i'm going to put him there but since there will be times i'm going to need that route and pass plays it might make more sense if you have a speedy tight end to put him there guy like Robert Tanya or things like an 86 or an 88 speed so there are multiple options there when it comes to your personnel but I'm gonna go and put Mercedes Lewis because like I said I'm gonna be running the ball now when it comes to the wide zone there's a couple different things you can do with this play but the way that I set this up with the two tight ends is so that I can run into the open side of the field because I'm really just gonna sprint around my blocking I don't have to make any emotions or any motions or adjustments I could run it just like this but I find it's best to motion this guy across into what looks like a bunch formation and uh, for the most part, this is just going to create a wall of blockers that will help me to get around. I mean, there's nothing getting through there. I'm sealing that edge with those extra defenders, and I'm just sprinting to get an easy 10 yards. So that's one way to do it. You can also go the opposite direction. Obviously, I don't really want to do this unless I have um, you know, the open side of the field. But you can see how I can create kind of the same look on the other side. So it's something that you can do. I mean, I motion across the receiver uh, rather than the tight end. Obviously, I want to motion across the tight end to seal that edge a little bit better. But this is something that you can do um, to try to, uh, you know, confuse your opponent, go the opposite way. And like I said, if you don't want to have any tells, uh, you don't have to create that wall of blocking at all. Uh, I can just run it like this, and I get a pretty good job. You can see right there, that guy got through right away. So to me, it's best to definitely motion that guy across. Um, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, you might be giving away where you're going, although a lot of times I'm going to be doing the same thing with some of the passing plays, so it's not necessarily a tell. But you can tell, tell about that tight bunch right there. I mean, nothing's getting through that, and it's creating me a hole pretty much every time, pretty consistent hole, as you can see right there. I mean, I didn't really get to the outside, but um, it's one of those things where even, even if your opponent knows you're going in that direction, you still got to stop it. Like right here, you know, the computer, let's let's say that they're, they're double safety blitzing is what it looks like. It doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? I'm getting outside of that. So it's like that's not something you're typically going to run into. Do. But based on the fact that I have that extra blocking tight end and I can really seal that edge, it really doesn't matter. Now, that's my top outside run. My favorite inside run would be the halfback zone week. Now, you can do a pretty similar thing with this by motioning across to the tight end of the receiver just to show your opponent a different look. 
But you can see how the, the whole line shifted when I motioned that tight end across. So I think this play here actually works best if you continue that motion. And, and, and this is just for, as an opportunity to confuse your opponent. But continue that motion across and go to the weak side. Flip it and go to the weak side here. As you can see, I didn't necessarily get the, the most. This is probably going to be best. I typically only run this if my opponent comes out in something spread. Something uh, a little bit you know lighter in the box. Now, like I said, you really have your choice whether you want to run that, the halfback zone weak, or the 0-1 trap which is a very good inside run as well. I find the 0-1 trap though is really better uh, when it comes to defenses that don't have like a second line. Like if you want to go against something like a Cub, a 3-3 Cub, or even something like a 2-4 double mug, or once again, something spaced out like the, the Sam uh, or the Dollar, this will be another really good run play. I'll go ahead and I'll match with the 3-3 Cub though. Give myself a little bit more of a challenge and you can see how, you know, this is just, you just go sprinting through right there. You know what I mean, it's like there's always gonna be a hole either straight ahead to the left or straight ahead to the right. This play here, the way that it whams uh, to the to the right there, I find that, I mean, sometimes because of the moving blocks inside and because you're under center, sometimes you won't get time. Sometimes it'll just like break through and you won't get a lot of uh, a lot of time with this run. But you can see how it's pretty consistent. You know what I mean? This is, this is one of the better run plays. But like I said, it really works best when, uh, you know, it's not like I'm getting, like that was a blitz. You can tell that that middle linebacker was attacking. The more attacking people are with this play, like sending man zero blitzes and stuff like that, the more quickly they're going to get through these gaps that are being created like if it's like you see right there once again the, the the linebacker was coming straight forward so if somebody's running a lot of manager blitzes this play isn't necessarily going to work but uh, it's a good run play nonetheless now if they are running a lot of man zero blitzes or a lot of man blitzes in general the better play to be is going to be the jet sweep so i don't know this looks kind of like a man coverage uh, this is a good opportunity as you can see here i mean we have a wide gap right up the middle there a lot of times i'll take that it's really this is like a read option play i'm reading the edge if the edge gets outside, I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to take it off short. But if he gets sucked in like he did there, I'm basically just going gonna, gonna to run around. And I have, you know, I just make sure I have one of my fastest guys there, which I think this is Mooney's like a 93 speed uh, as we get a weird uh, prevent here because I pick random. But, uh, but yeah, you have a lot of opportunities here um, for big plays. Anytime you can get your, your the ball in the hands of your playmaker, it's going to be a big play. But this particular uh, play is going to be best against, like I said, man coverages and cover three and cover four because the, the cornerbacks drop back a lot of times taking themselves out of the play and not really helping out and run support. Although there, that was weird. I mean, I didn't even get the handoff. <laughs> As um, I mean, you know, some of some of the some of the Packers interior defensive linemen are actually pretty good. But like I said, once again, I'm not even reading the coverages. And you can see them having success. The only thing that's really going to give this problems or stop this is going to be cover two with hard flats as they're going to cut off these outside runs. Now, if your opponent starts chasing the jet motion or just over pursuing in any way or just you know paying too much attention to the motion, you could always hit them with the zone fake jet. But that's not really going to work against the computer, so I'm not going to waste my time because basically that's something that really only works if the user starts following them across prematurely. That will open up the middle of the field for run plays the last run plays the counter why so the tight end's already going across so i'm not going to mess with him i'm just going to motion across mooney here it's a man coverage though so it's something where i don't necessarily have to do that it's going to work better against uh, against zone but you can see this is a good uh counter run play if your opponent is i mean obviously none of these are as good as the stretch you know what i mean like the stretch is the is the money play these are all just secondary plays but ultimately, um, you know, you can still have a lot of success doing this. Say you're in a league with a cooldown rule, you could always use this play as a replacement for the stretch. Because, you know, based on the fact that um, the tight end's motioning across too, and we have a pulling guard, it's like we have a bunch of blockers here, and then we're adding two to that bunch. So it's like the entire team's really pulling over to the side, and it can really open up some lanes. You can see I'm getting some pretty easy holes here. Now, one dink and dunk play that I really didn't plan on showing is just the PA deep out. Very quickly, it's just got man beating routes all over the field. So if I choose any man coverage, the Y route, the X route, and the B route will all beat man coverages. Although realistically, um, you could also throw to uh, the, the, the B route in a situation like a cover three or cover four. Anything like that where you can just motion this guy out. Like if you have a cover three or cover four, you can motion this guy out to the sideline. But a 10 yard out route, you know, if it's covered through cover four, you can make a 10 yard out route in your audible adjustment. So it's not something, or in your hot route adjustment. So that's not something I want to spend a lot of time on. The one dink and dunk play that I do want to spend a lot of time on, though, is the shallow cross. So this is going to be your dink and dunk play against just about every single zone and man coverage in the game. This play here can be your everything. You can go double drag simply by putting the A route on a, on a, uh, a drag. And now I have the A tight end and the X receiver, which is a, 
a route, a concept that gets open against any man or zone. The longer you hold it, the better. As you can see right there, I mean, I threw it a little bit early and I threw him into contact. But like I said, if I wait, he's always going to get open once he gets past those zones at some point. So you can make a double drags concept like that, but you can also make something out of the bunch concept that I was showing earlier simply by motioning this guy across. Now this looks like a man zero. I'm not sure if it's going to work here. But again, zone coverages, you motion this guy across and put the Y receiver on a streak, you're going to have um, a good corner route concept. Now, like I said, this here, not necessarily going to work. As you can see here, the drag was wide open once again, though. Because like I said, I can do that just about all game. And that's a 40-yard play on a simple drag. Now, if you get a zone coverage, like cover three, um, you can see uh, it's going to be better if you put the uh, the X receiver on that, uh, on that streak or a fade. And then just, you know, give yourself another drag option from somewhere else. And you can see how this guy's going to get open every single time. Whether it's cover three, cover four, cover two is going to be the same way. Now for cover three and cover four, if you do that same motion and do that same setup, you could also put the X route on a flat. And you'll see that he just gets open for an instant throw. You can just you know do a nice little catch and run for 10 yards just about every single time. So that's pretty much it for dink and dunk. But that's also a one play touchdown against a lot of different defenses as well. So I'm going to pick that. I'm going to start off with cover two zone. Now against cover two, you can't really split the center because of how this route is designed. But if I motion him over once again, and I put the Y receiver on a streak to pull back the safety and the X uh, on a flat, which is a trick I'll show you guys against cover three, the uh, the flat route. But if I put that X on a flat, he's gonna pull that cornerback down. And then at this point, I mean, if I really want to with the A route, I can put him on some sort of check down or I can just pass block him. It really doesn't matter. But uh, at the end of the day, I'm really shooting for that B receiver. As you can see, I mean, I got a horrible throw, but he's going to be wide open. I don't know how many great throws I'm going to get because Justin Fields' accuracy is kind of crazy in this game. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's really the play. I don't need, like I said, the tight end, the running back. I don't need any of that because I got my check down the X route. If I really want to get that out quick, I can throw that out quick. Like I said, it's going to be better against cover three and cover four because they drop back. But I have that check down right away against pretty much any zone other than hard flats. And if I get my opponent the hard flat because of that, it's going to just make the uh, the A, or I'm sorry, the B route get open even more. So that's pretty much the play. Like I said, I'll do it one more time. Try to get a completion. To, to the B route. As you can see, we have a catch and run, one play touchdown opportunity as long as we drop it in the bucket there because we have those other routes pulling apart the zones. Now, this play doesn't really hit a lot of one play touchdowns against a lot of different zones other than cover two, but it also can be a one play touchdown against cover four quarters. So let's go and let's pick that, and then defense will pick cover four match. Cover four is pretty easy to glitch. You just need five routes that go deeper than 10 yards. So I'm going to motion out the running back for the first time in this video, and I'm going to put him on a 10 yard out route because I don't want him running that deep route. I want to, I want to have the middle of the field wide wide open. So I'm going to put him on a 10-yard out route, I'm going to put the X route on a 10-yard out route, and then I'm going to put the tight end on a streak, because the tight end is going to be the play. All these other, you know, quarter zones are just going to basically be uh, left open, as you can see here. The tight end is just running straight down the middle of the field with nobody covering him. The reason this play works is because you have five routes going over 10 yards, and there's only four deep coverage quarter zones. So there's not a lot of matching principles designed for a streaking tight end. The tight end is usually the last one that gets picked up. So you can see, because I have all these other zones, beaters going that this particular player just gets forgotten in coverage and just runs down the center of the field and gets open by about 10 to 20 to even 30 yards of space by the time the ball's in the air so I'll do that one more time like I said I have to, you know I should need to do that but uh, yeah all you gotta really do is guy like I said 10 yard out routes on the outside you have five routes that are going over 10 yards the tight end is usually going to be the one that gets forgotten and even with pressure i mean i could just lob that up at any point in time because i know he's going to get wide open this play also has a lot of success against man coverages though so let's go and let's pick that and then we're going to pick uh, man zero blitz now against man zero i'm going to make that motion one more time i'm going to go ahead i'm going to check and release my running back and also check and release my tight end and i'm just going to put the uh the the wide receiver on a streak all these check and releases are really designed um, to just give me, uh, you know, a little bit more pass pro. And now you can see how the streaking receiver just gets wide open because a lot of these times these routes are going to bump into one another. It really can depend on what man zero blitz you're looking at, depending on who's blitzing. But the drag receiver is really what causes this receiver to get wide open. As this outside quarterback here has to follow him across. And he basically sets a pick on half the DBs. And this guy just runs around the pile and is wide open. But I also could have threw to this corner route as well. So that streak might not always get open based off of what defense you're looking at. But this corner route will. I picked random man blitzes. So I might get some cover twos and some cover ones in there. But you can see here, this is obviously a double safety blitz. 
I'll go ahead and uh, make my adjustments with my, my check and releases. And you can see how this guy is just consistently getting open. I mean, where was the defender there? There was nobody even close. As it looks like his defensive player just like glitched out. There was nobody around. And look how that drag route concept works again as 12 just gets wide open and 37 and 25 are just dancing with each other as he just completely sets a pick and washes him out of the play once again. I mean, he's 20 yards behind by the time I throw this ball. And then last but not least, this is also your one-play touchdown against Cub 4 regular. So let's go and let's pick that. Then we'll pick uh, Cub 4 drop. Setup's going to be pretty similar. you got to motion out this running back. I'm going to run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field because I need the extra space. But uh, but that's really all you got to do. The the X route, once again, I can put him on a flat. I can steal that all game. It's going to work best from a hash mark, but you can just get a good catch and run, you know, five, six, seven yards every single time as a check down if you throw it right away. But I'm going to focus on the one play touchdown. As all I'm really going to do is motion this running back out, put the A route on the street, put the RB route on the street. That's the most important part. And then I just have to buy time, which isn't too difficult considering that there's not a lot of guys in the pocket. But the longer I wait, the more time I have to this receiver just get past that safety as I turn him upfield and just drop it in the bucket right in the corner of the end zone. So that might be one of the harder throws to make, but it's still one of the uh, the more important um, you know parts to the scheme because cover four is definitely one of the uh, the bigger issues when it comes to one play touchdowns with this scheme. As there's really not a lot of great, I don't have a lot of post routes. This route works because for whatever reason, this free safety you can see he's turning and running with these streaks. They're both reacting to the two streaks on that side. I don't know why, but I'll take it. As you can see, I'm holding that ball as long as possible because the more I hold it, if I I want to let that guy get further away. You know what I mean? I want to wait till he crosses him, till he crosses this parallel mark before I get that ball out of my hand because now he's just too far away to make a play, and then I can just bullet and pass lead up to the corner of the end zone and have an opportunity as long as I have you know, a pretty good receiver. Or you can throw it short underneath and just get a big play. It'll work the same way that way. But I'm trying to hit a one-play touchdown. So now that's pretty much it for the one-play touchdowns from that play. But we also have a lot from the Z curl. So let's go ahead and let's pick that. On defense, we're going to start off with cover two again, Tampa two. So for this play here, I really just got to put the B receiver on a fade and motion him out. Or I can put him on a 10-yard out route. There's a couple different options there. But then I want to put the, the X route on a 10-yard in. And the reason for that is because I want him to to occupy uh, that linebacker so I get this this guy open right over the middle now you're not necessarily only gonna get a one play touchdown because you're throwing to a tight end I'm gonna go over some plays that didn't go over yet like cover two man there's a couple of good routes on the play here like putting the X route on a streak so that the uh, the Y receiver can get open outside as you can see it's a different type of corner route and it can have more success than the previous corner route that I showed against cover two man but you can also get the tight end open by motioning this guy out here and putting him on a fade the Y tight end or the Y receiver, I want a smart route in this scenario because I want him to get that safety's attention. And you can see how this tight end can get open right over the middle. Uh, for once again, a big play. It's a tight end, so it's not necessarily going to score every single time. Also works against man zero, so let's go and let's pick that. This play has a really good quick hitting route to the wide side if you just want to work the Y receiver. Typically, if he's matched up with a safety, he should get wide open for a very easy catch and run one play touchdown. Now, the guy that caught me was the guy on the running back, so you could always change that up and block the tight end as blocking the running back is really what got that open. So we'll go and do that one more time. I said, just, you know, basically hitting this guy in the corner route, and if he has enough speed, he could easily be gone. Go ahead and I'll do that one more time as I just want to get one big catch and run here before I end this. As you can see, if you get that on a nice rack catch, there's not a lot of defenders that are going to be able to stop that. It also works against cover one, which we haven't gone over much, so let's go and let's pick cover one hole. So once again, just streak that X route. You're going to see how that helps to pull back the safety and allow this receiver to get wide open once again because of all the, the garbage of these guys you know, bouncing into one another. You're going to want to run this from a hash mark, though. You saw that sideline kind of got in my way. But this is the same idea. You can see how, once again, these routes are going to set picks on one another. And both receivers are pretty much wide open the same way they were against cover zero, with the exception of the streak because of that single high safety. The real genius of this play, though, is against defenses like cover three. So we're going to go and pick that. Then on defense, we're going to go over and go back to the nickel, pick the cover three sky. Against cover three, you can run from a hash mark to the short side of the field like I am here. Then I can motion out this running back. I can motion across the X route too, but the running back does a little bit more to spread the defense. It goes further out. Then I'm going to put the B receiver on a fade also. And I probably want to switch that drag to a flat because that flat will get open once again as we went over in a previous play. Uh, it's something I could use as a check down over and over. But I want to focus on the one play touchdown, which is going to be the tight end. So let's go and let's motion this out. 
out. The tight end, uh, this play looks somewhat similar to something I've, sh I've shown in another offense from this video, where the B route's gonna get up the field a lot faster. And it's gonna give me an opportunity to at least get a play inside of the safety. Now it has one play touchdown capability, but we'll have to do that more than one time because you know this is a play that at the very least you're gonna get a big play right in front of the safety. Now I'm gonna go ahead and streak the B route this time because I want him to just get up that field as quick as possible because that's really the key here. As you can see, I can bullet and pass lead away from that safety and get a very easy one play touchdown with the streak being more successful than the fade. Once again, I really just want to, you know, this this guy here, the slower the better because I really want that safety to turn and run with that, uh, that you know, that streak going past him. And the second I see him turn and run, that's when I'm throwing the ball. As you can see, the ball is probably already out of my hands. Probably mostly more because of the pressure. I had a defensive tackle in my face. But I know that's what's going to happen is the ball, you know, basically just bullet and pass it away from that safety. And this tight end is definitely fast enough to get a one-play touchdown with this look. As this cornerback here is being held down by that corner route once again. He's way too far out of place to make a play. So I'll do that again, but I'll put everybody on streaks. As it really doesn't matter. Like I said, I got my check down on the left, which is the X route. But the streak just seems to get up the field a little bit quicker. And as long as I can get a good, uh, get some good pass pro, I mean, that's a one-play touchdown nobody's going to be expecting against cover three. One of the reasons I like this play is because cover three is one of the hardest plays that a one-play touchdown against. And you have two different ways to hit a one-play touchdown with this particular concept. The other way is to run it from the other hash mark. And now I'm going to either, you know, I can do the same thing by motioning out the running back or I can motion across the X receiver. It really doesn't matter. But all I'm going to do to change this play up this time is put everybody on streaks, put everybody, uh, you know, on, uh, on go routes on the other side. And then I'm also going to streak or fade the X route. I find it works better if you fade the X route. But running this from a hash mark to this side with all these streaks is going to get this guy open up the seam very easily on the other side. Now that was actually, he got bumped around a lot and it still worked out. I'm going to do it again with the X route on a streak just to show you guys that it works the exact same way. It really doesn't matter. The corner route's the most important part. This is a concept that I've put out in a lot of different uh, offenses. As you can see, I just had the bullet and passing away from the safety and it's just wide open because the cornerback's nowhere near to help out. This same setup is a one-play touchdown against cover four as well. Cover four mass, so let's go and let's pick cover four quarters. Against cover four, it's pretty much going to be the same setup. I'm just going to motion this guy out, put him on a fade, and then put the B route on a fade. I don't really have to do anything else, as the A route here is just going to split right down the middle and be a very easy one-play touchdown once again, wide open. I'm going to go to my end of the video there. If you guys want to see more offenses from the Bears, I'll have that popping up on screen as I did make a video about that recently. And that's it. Thanks for watching, man. Wish it out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.